Hi everyone, I wanted to record a long overdue tutorial about how to make a really quick curation website um, on table to site and Airtable. Uh, I was supposed to do this weeks ago, um, but I unfortunately didn't get around to it and I was just halfway through recording it and my computer froze. So hopefully it won't do it this time. Uh, but Loom always massively slows up my computer. Um, so actually this is one of the first uh, no-code projects I ever did. Um, and I wrote a Medium article about it. I was so excited. I've hardly ever written a Medium article. Uh, and it actually did pretty well. They featured it on their startups page. Um, but this was no November, November 15th last year. Um, and I went into quite a lot of detail on here about how I did it. So this is a good resource um, if you want to check it out. But I'll go through all this stuff in the video anyway. Uh, so essentially the website was called Feminist Parent. And the idea was that... Um, you know, my daughter was uh, one years old then and I wanted her to be exposed to more kind of positive female uh, empowerment, empowering media um, and, and myself as well. And I couldn't really find any or I couldn't find much. So I decided to compile a list in case other people were looking for the same thing. Uh, but this tool uh, table site is really flexible. So um we had the AMA with Sharath the other week and he talked about a few things he's built using it. So this is Tools for Makers, um, which is a really cool list. He launched out on Product Hunt. Angel Philosopher, uh, which is no a load of Naval's content. So Naval had that on his Twitter bio for ages and they worked together on it. Uh, request for Product, which automatically pulls in tweets that where people have tagged requests for products so there's one of mine there and also KP made do things that don't scale which I heard about ages ago and I think did really well on product hunt and is a super simple concept but it's possible to do things like this and although these sites are kind of starting to look a bit uh, samey to people in the no code space um, if you if you're making it for any other market or any other group of people outside of no code they will never have seen anything like this and they'll think it's really cool and it must have taken you ages whereas in actual fact um, this site as I said in my article took me about two and a half hours so essentially um, it all runs off of one air table you can when you go to table to site they have a few example sites and you can just clone their site and their Airtable base so you have a, a good place to start from and then you just customize it. So I'll explain here how the Airtable base works. So uh, it, they always have three tabs, settings, content and items. Settings are just a few general settings for the website. Content is actually what goes on the pages and items is what shows up in your, your list of things. And then I've got one other form here, one other uh, table here which is submissions which is just a clone of the items one so I'll go through these one by one so settings if you look down the left hand side these are will already be filled in for you logo main menu main menu background button color button background color and so on they're all pretty self-explanatory uh, but essentially whatever values are here you can edit um, to suit your needs so for logo um, there was one there already, but you just replace it with an image um, and that has, has to be hosted somewhere else. Uh, so I just hosted that on a random site I found, IMGBB, where you can upload your images and it, then get a link and drop it there. And that shows up as the logo up here. Then you have a menu where you, anything you type here will show up as a menu item and then you can either have a link or you can say I want the word contact to be a link that goes to my contact page. Um, button color, button background color, that will change it site wide. Tile theme, I can't remember the options here, but they have um, table to site has some documentation which explains the options, but you just need to copy and paste or type in whatever option you want here and it will change it. Uh, title of the site, font, font size, custom CSS is useful if you can do a bit of CSS. I think I used that. Uh, well, I did use that um, just to put some small amounts of background and padding, background color and padding on the 
on the tag so you could read them a bit more easily. Um, and then MailChimp um, API key and list ID is only if you have a sign up form. If you don't have one, you don't need this. Uh, but if you do, you just need to set up a mail, MailChimp account and drop in your details here. I've just removed them for the sake of this video. Then, so the content page, so the content table, sorry, this is um, essentially every page on the site is on this one table. And on the left is the ID of the section and on the right is the page. So I've got, as you can see on the right, I've got home, 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 home page, and then I've got contact, contact, contact. So the contact page has three sections and then a thanks page, which has uh, four sections, five sections. And then on the left hand side, you can see what sections are. So the header, um, header, join, list, add your own footer. That's the home page. So this is the header section, this is the join section, this is the list section, this is the add your own section, and this is the footer section. So they just show up in the exact order you put them in um, on, the, on the spreadsheet. And then the contact page, I've got a header section, the form, and then the footer. So for the header, so on any of these sections, and you can just add a new row here to add a new section in the website, you get a drop down list of the different types of things you can have. And they're all pretty simple. And there is documentation on his website about what they all are. Then you can edit the text color and the background color. Um, each one has a title and a, a subtitle of text. So you type in whatever you want there. And then the options bit is always the most important. Uh, and this looks a little bit complicated, but you can effectively use what's already there or he has documentation about what each thing means. But so for example, the image, um, I just replaced the image that was in the uh, example one with a link to one that I found on pexels.com, which is a free stock, stock photo site. And then you can say what color you want the image overlay to be and, and what percentage of transparency you want it to be and position. And then you can say what buttons do you want? So I want a button that says view the list and I want the link to go to the list section and a button that says submit content. And I want that button to go to my air table. And then if you look here, so that's the title, that's the subtitle. And then these are the two buttons. So it really takes loads of the styling and everything like that out of your hands, which I personally like a lot. Then join section. So that's a type is newsletter, subscription, um, title is subscribe, text, and so on. And then that automatically puts in this box here and will link up to your MailChimp by itself. Then the list view. Um, got tile view here and everything is the same as the other ones except for this bit uh, so the options um, so you say what sheet do you want these to feed from so this is feeding from my item sheet um, and then you have to list all the different filters you want and they have to be exactly the same and written exactly the same and um, capitalized the same way as what's on your item sheet which I'll show you in a second how many items per row, um, what is the theme, so do you want image only or do you want text below it, um, and then I've got an image overlay color which is kind of a pinky color, and then a button, and then a filter type, select one, so on this site, you select one at a time, and then if you select another one, it will just select that. on. The other way you can have it is, uh, I don't know if it's like like that on this, but on tools for, yeah. So if you click on two, it will search for both of those things. So that is another option of the way you can make the filter work. And then when you click on the box here, it will show your additional text and then there's a button where to get this. And that just has a link 
to uh, whatever you want. So if I just dive into the item sheet here, so you can see I've got title, image, description. So that's what shows up when you actually click on one of the boxes, the link, and then extra one, extra two, extra three, extra four uh, is they show in the four corners. So you can have, I think it's like one, two, and then three, four. Uh, so you can decide what you want to have showing up there. And so I've got my extra one as like book TV show, but then I've got my tags as books TV shows because it made more sense. Um, and then you can have like a you can have an upvote thing. So people people click on the heart and it will add a little upvote there. Um, and I think I may have artificially inflated these numbers, uh, which you can do. So that's another feature. Uh, so the way I'm taking submissions for this, oh, another cool thing about Airtable is that you can actually, if you add a new row here, you can actually um, add an attachment and you can actually do a Google search for an image from here. And then you can select a picture and it will drop it straight into your air table here. So I just, when I was putting all these images, I just searched for the thing I wanted in Google. And then the image was just immediately there, which is really handy. Um, and then, so in terms of submissions, so what I did, I didn't want people to directly submit straight to the site without me approving it. Um, so I just duplicated this sheet and I made a sheet called submissions here and then I made a I made a form view of this uh, which is really easy in Airtable and that is the link that I get which I then put in as um, the link that they click on to submit. So that goes straight into the submission sheet and then I simply look at it, um, look at any new additions and decide if I want to copy them over um, and I just manually copy them into the item sheet and they will then show up in the grid. And then back to content, so these sections are all fairly self-explanatory footer um, then if you want to add a new page it's as simple as add a new line and put a different page title here and it will make a new page and then you need to add it to your menu so people can get to it um, so I've got the contact page image contact form I've just said where I want it to send to that's already a, a, a type already so it just shows up automatically um, and then footer, you have to kind of copy that and paste it in again from previously, or you can have a slightly different footer. And then um, for my thank you page after submitting, um, I've just done the same thing with a few more sections here. So that is really as simple as it gets. Um, and then I can't quite remember if there were any um, more complicated parts to it. I think I had a bit of trouble putting it onto a custom domain, but that was probably because it was one of my first times. Well, certainly my first time using table to site and I'm just not very good with DNS and things like that. Um, but yeah, it took two and a half hours end to end. So really there's nothing holding you back. It's just down to, can you get a list of 10 or 20 things uh, that you think will appeal to whatever your target market is and stick them into a website and then you've got your own cool curation website which you can add to um, you can do all kinds of clever things I'm sure with uh, with Zapier to to get more data in there um, and yeah it's a really cool way of, of launching a, a quick site so please let me know if you have any questions but um, that's it for this video mm -hmm.